The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Every year the parents of Jesus used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When, the, when he was 12 years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they, were, when they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan, and it was only after days, a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his intelligence and his replies. They were overcome when they saw him, and his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me? He replied. Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? For they did not understand what he meant. He then went down with them and came to Nazareth and lived under their authority. His mother stored all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday, we celebrate the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is a crown of the past three solemnities we had, namely the Pentecost, the Holy Trinity, and the Corpus Christi, which is the Body and Blood of Christ. These three solemnities show us clearly how much love God has for us. And so, in the heart of Jesus, which is a fountain of life and love, we saw clearly that the love that God has for us is beyond what we can comprehend. Then, the question is, how do we respond to this love of God for us? This unconditional love, how do we as human respond to this love? And today we have one example of someone who was fully human like us, who have responded to this love of God. And is no other person than the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that is why today we celebrate the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So the feast, the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus are somehow intertwined. Apart from the fact that the body of Christ, the body and blood of Jesus was drawn from the body of Mary, or we could say it's an extension of Mary's body, the heart of Mary and Jesus has always worked together. And this is because Mary has shown her love for God without reservation. Her love for God started from when she was very little. And this was because she had shared a special grace of God before she was born. Mary, as a, as a hum, as human person, was conceived without the original sin. So she was conceived immaculate. And the teaching of the church that says Mary was born immaculate without the original sin of Adam and Eve was, gave, came as a result of some aspect of the book of Hebrew that says Jesus is the same with us in every way but sin. So we believe that Jesus had no sin at all. 
And if Mary wasn't conceived without sin, there was no way Jesus would have been born without sin. So God gave Mary that special privilege to have a share in the divine grace before she was born, to enable to prepare her as a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit where his son will dwell. And that was how Mary was given an extra grace which gave her the capacity to love God much more than what you and I can do. But the love of Mary was very manifest in her daily lives. In her daily life, every day of her life, we see this love showing right from the time the angel visited her. She had her own plans of how she wants to live her life. But at that tender age, when the angel visited her and said to her, you'll be the mother of the Son of God, what, did she, what was her response? Behold, I am your handmaid. Let it be done to me according to your word. And the scriptures say from that moment, the Holy Spirit came upon her and she was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. The yes, which was said by her at that time the angel visited her, will continue for the rest of her life. It wasn't on that day alone that she said yes to God. And one of those incidents when she had to say yes to God happened in our gospel reading today. But even before the gospel reading, you remember, when she, was, when she had her baby, shortly after the birth of Jesus, King Herod wanted to destroy the child. And God said, sent an angel to Joseph in a dream, telling her, him to take Mary and the child and run to Egypt. It was a long and difficult journey, but Mary still had to say yes, carrying a little baby, going, making that journey to Egypt. On arriving in Egypt, they tried to get settled. Three years later, they started learning the language, getting more people. Joseph may have started having customers because he was a carpenter. And just as if they were, they had fully settled in that place, another message came and said, leave this country and go back to Jerusalem, to Israel. And Mary still have to say yes to that. Did you consider what difficulty they would go through? Leaving all their customers and everything behind, they have to go back to Jerusalem. On arriving in Jerusalem, where they intended to settle, the angel said, no, don't settle in this place, go to Nazareth. And she still had to say yes. It was in Nazareth they lived until the child turned 12. And they have to bring the child to the temple for the first time because you cannot go to the temple unless you are 12 at that time. And so when they brought him, the first day Jesus came to the temple, as a young man of 12 years old, his wisdom, his knowledge and everything was beyond what any of those who have doctors in their theology or whatever knowledge of God has. And they were all astounded. But something happened. When the family left to go back to, Jer to Nazareth, Jesus stayed behind without telling them. And you remember there were no mobile phones. They couldn't call him or send him a text message or send a WhatsApp message or maybe Facebook message asking people with his photos, has anyone found this child? They have to go from place to place, from house to house, every place they think he might be. And this took them another three days to search for him until finally they found him in the temple. And when they found him in the temple, what happened? Jesus said, why were you looking for me? Don't you know I should be doing my father's business? Just imagine yourself, if you were the mother of that child, what will you do? I'm sure some of you will look for your wooden spoon on that day. Isn't it? But they took him gently home. The Bible says he went home, lived under their authority, learning from them. And Mary continued to ponder all these things in her heart. Her first heartbreak happened when the child was presented in the temple after for purification. When Simeon, the priest, saw them, he said, he made a prophecy and said, This child will be the sign for the rising of many, for the rising and falling of many in Israel. And through him, a sword will pierce your own soul, you the mother of this child, so that the sacred thought of many will be laid open. Mary pondered on these words in her heart. Now, there are many other occasions that Mary had to continue to say yes right up to the cross, watching her son 
hanging on the cross innocently, dying painfully and slowly. It was one of the most difficult moments of her life, and that would have been most difficult for any woman without a husband to watch her only child dying like that. And with all this that happened in her life, she kept saying yes to God. Why? Because of her love for God. This is what the church wants us to learn today. That we, like Mary, can respond to God's love, even though not as perfect as she did, but in our own little way, we can respond to this love that God has shown us in the sacred heart of Jesus. Our hearts may not be immaculate, but we can try our best to make our bodies immaculate. We can avoid sin. We can be like Mary in so many ways. You remember, he always, she always directs attention to Jesus. She never draw any attention to herself. At the wedding in Cana, what did she say to the servants? Do whatever he tells you. At the foot of the cross, even the Calvary scene out there, you can see clearly, John was looking at Mary. Mary was looking at Jesus. So always she is drawing attention to God. She never brings attention to herself. And she always wants us to do whatever he tells us. In our own little way, that is how we can show our love for Jesus and our love for God. And what is Jesus telling us to do today? There are so many things. If you look around you, look around your house, look around your place of work, look around your families, there are a lot of things that Jesus is telling us. And so today, let us pray at this Mass, asking for the intercession of Mary to give us some of the graces she received from God to enable us to respond to God the way she did. When we talk about praying, many of us, we don't know the power of prayer and we don't even try it, so we don't even know. Mary has given us a very powerful weapon and this weapon has been with us for many years and it's no other things than the rosary. We carry everything with us except what we should carry, isn't it? How many of you have your rosaries in your pocket? How many of you have your rosaries in your, in your, in your handbag? We will never forget our mobile phones, but we will never carry our rosaries with us. I'm glad many of you still do that. But this is the powerful, the most powerful weapon that Mary has given to us. With this, we can conquer any evil. With this, we can conquer sin. With this, we can conquer sickness. With this, we can conquer, we can crush the head of the serpent as well. But sometimes when we pray this rosary, we pray it in a hurry. We just want to finish it quickly and then sit down doing nothing. Why do we rush the rosary when we pray the rosary? When you pray this rosary, you need to meditate on the mysteries. The important part of the rosary is the mysteries of the rosary. Because when you pray the rosary meditatively, the joyful mystery, the mysteries of light, the sorrowful mysteries, and the glorious mystery, you would have gone through the entire life of Jesus, beginning from birth to ascension. So this is what Mary wants us to ponder on every day of our life. So let us try at least to say the rosary five decades a day. Even if you can't pray it alone, invite your family members to join you and pray the rosary. This is what we need at this time to conquer whatever we are going through. I think the only prayer in the church which I know that has proved so much more powerful than the rosary is the Holy Mass. So with rosary and the Holy Mass, we have Mary, our mother, with us. When you pray the rosary, Mary come and take you by the hand. She's holding your hands. You are journeying through the life of Jesus with her. And she will keep you in safe place. She will continue to intercede for your protection, for the protection of your family and friends. So my dear friends, we can be like Mary in, in many ways. So we pray at this Mass that the Feast of the Immaculate Conception we celebrate today will draw our heart closer to Jesus. It will draw our hearts closer to God. 
so that like Mary, we will always continue to say yes to God and keep our hearts and body immaculate. May God bless you.